It's basically based about uh, estimation of small reservoir storage capacities in a semi-arid environment, a case study in the Upper East region of Ghana, which was published in Physics and Chemistry of the Earth in 2005. In uh, the abstract, it already says why this is an interesting uh, topic for people interested in water resource management, especially in the drier parts of the world, where you find literally thousands and thousands of small reservoirs. You find them almost in all savanna type environments in Africa, but also in Asia and in Latin America. But we do not know much about the distribution of the reservoirs, where they are, uh, and here a, me a method is presented in which we can make a nice inventory mainly based on remote sensing data. Here it says in the first paragraph what the problem is, is like there's no real good comprehensive overview of where all these small reservoirs are and we need uh, a method, a simple method using satellite imagery to measure the surface areas so, to, so we know where they are, how many they are, how they are distributed but we also would like to know how much water is in there and that's of course more difficult to determine by just looking at it from the sky. Uh, the study area is the Upper East region of Ghana, which is fairly rich in terms of small reservoirs. It's a semi-arid area, it's a savanna area, a lot of agriculture is, have, is going on, and here you see a map of where you can find it uh, within the Volta Basin. The first real step in the research was to make an inventory of all the reservoirs using satellite imagery. There were four Landsat images acquired that showed the area. And the authors used a maximum likelihood classification using uh, bands 3, 4, and 5, which is uh, visible red and two infrared, uh, near infrared bands. Uh, and these seem to be working very well to delineate open water bodies. And what was important is that there are many different colors of water still, even though it's, uh, water is different from the general environment. You have to worry about things with algae, floating vegetation, sediments, uh, or very, having very clear water, maybe seeing part of the bottom. Uh, so all these types of water were classified first separately and then later regrouped as one big water class and it was an important part of the, of the success. This led to a mapping of uh, 154 small reservoirs and in this case we defined small reservoirs as uh, reservoirs ranging from 1 to 35 hectares. And there are two uh, much larger reservoirs in the region but we uh, excluded those from its analysis and it's also not really possible to go much uh, smaller than one hectare because the resolution of Landsat imagery is 30 meters so your estimate of the uh, total area would become very inaccurate. There, there was no possibility to do ground truthing during the acquisition. The uh, ground truthing had to take place uh, later, a few years later actually. We can still be quite confident that the classification was accurate because almost 50% of all the water uh, areas were visited during that visit and every single time there was indeed a reservoir so it was in a way a score of 100. What's interesting here is what you see is that the there are uh, indeed a, a large number of these small reservoirs and the total uh, surface area of them is about a thousand hectares. With this remotely sensed map uh, we can say something about the distribution of reservoirs. It is so, such that the smallest reservoirs occur at the highest frequency and with increasing surface area the frequency decreases exponentially. They say here that uh, the distribution does not follow a power law, but it's actually when you look at it, it is kind of a Pareto distribution, so it comes very close to, to a power law actually. Uh, important is here is how, uh, how that looks like on a, on a semi-log graph. You see it follows very nicely a straight line, uh, except that in the end always there's uh, this, this little up part in the line, so there's the, the largest reservoirs uh, there are always a little bit more of them than you would expect if you would uh, just follow the, the straight line here. And the authors then continue describing a little bit where they find the reservoirs. They tend to be, in this case, more in the upper stream, the smaller streams, the first or second order streams. The distribution is such that, of course, you need to have a valley uh, that lends itself to the construction of a dam, but you also want to be close to a population, you want to be close to a road, and that sort of makes up uh, the choice of the reservoir sightings. The most important part of this article is the bathymetrical survey and the derivation of the area volume relations. Its point is a little bit with remote sensing you can nicely see the surface areas but you would like to see also something say something about the volume. You don't want to know how big they are, you also want to know how many cubic meters are in these reservoirs. And because there was a wide variety in shapes these reservoirs a large percentage of the total population was uh, visited, almost 40%, 60 reservoirs were visited and a detailed mathematic survey was uh, performed 
in each of these reservoirs. That uh, survey consisted by rowing around with a, a small inflatable boat, taking GPS points and measuring the depth at these points with a measuring rod and also with a uh, making an outline, an exact outline by walking over the edge of land and water. On average, uh, there was a, the density was of measurement points was relatively high. There were about uh, 28.6 depth measurements per hectare, so that allowed the authors to make a nice bathymetric model of it, a 3D model of each reservoir. By the way, here you see a map of the uh, distribution of these reservoirs, and you see that there is, they are not in the plains and also not in the highest parts of the area. If reservoirs would be a sort of triangular or half pyramids, like in this uh, image, you would expect that the volume is related to the, the area to the power one and a half times a certain constant here. When we then look at the 60 reservoirs and what kind of distribution they followed, you see a surprisingly close fit actually. You see here that factor in front of the log here. If you take the log of this uh, equation number three, you would get this e you would get this equation. One and a half uh, of the exponent would be in front of the log. And you see that actually in reality it comes very close to one and a half, 1.43. So that was very surprising that it was uh, such a good correlation. It also, by looking at it this way, you can sort of say, okay, there's a characteristic length of a reservoir, and that's about 20 times the depth of the reservoir. That means they're relatively shallow reservoirs, which is indeed uh, correct. Now, the great news, in a way, is that the models, uh, this, this, this simple equation, explains 97.5 of the measured variance in terms of volume. So if you can measure the surface area, which we can with means of remote sensing, then you can also make a very good estimate, very good ac accurate estimate of the actual volumes in these reservoirs. Uh, and that despite the variety of reservoir shapes. In the end, of course, you can put it back. This is then the, the, the magical formula if you want. If you want to know the volume stored in a reservoir and you know the area, you just plug in the area and out comes uh, the volume. And it's a very accurate estimate. So that's a very interesting result from this paper. Then uh, quickly the conclusions and outlook. By using Landsat you're limited by uh, clouds and that might be very interesting uh, to, to not to be bothered by clouds because in the rainy season you also, also want like to look at these reservoirs so future research uh, should include radar images that are not hindered by clouds and that uh, research has indeed uh, taken place since the publication of this article. Authors end with an evaluation of the usefulness of these small reservoirs even though they are not enormous and they so they don't store an awful lot of water by the fact that they are well distributed over the country they can uh, serve many purposes uh, and uh, actually the impact is probably relatively small because uh, much smaller than these large dams that you would otherwise uh, have to have but for the first time we now also have some tools to manage these diffuse systems by these uh, by uh, applying remote sensing